Hi guys, welcome to the Archive. My name is Matt and this week I've got a half dozen or so accessories for a wizard study or necromancer's lair. You can absolutely just stick these on whatever furniture you've got planned, or you can build them with magnets the way I show, and you can use them with my magnetic furniture that I've shown in some other videos. I'll link those up there somewhere. Anyway, the point of that magnetic furniture is that it lets you customize it on the fly, however you need, for whatever accessories you need, without making dozens and dozens of different types of furniture, or just using blank furniture, which, to be honest, just doesn't look as good. This video topic, again, was voted for by my patrons, and yet again, I've ended up doing it a fair bit faster than I would have otherwise planned to do it. If this is something you would like a vote on while helping me keep creating these videos, the link to my Patreon is in the description. Anyway, let's get building. So the scrolls were one of the easiest bits. I started by cutting some strips of paper to three quarters of an inch by half an inch, and then cut some nicks out of three of the edges with an X-Acto knife. This bit is totally optional, but it adds some nice detail. Theoretically, you could do it for the thick stacks of paper I show next too, if you bleed spare time, and are resistant to repetition-induced insanity. I soak them in tea for about a minute before leaving them to dry on some parchment paper. While that was drying, I made some wax seals from 2mm balls of putty. I used green stuff. To get the indent, I cut a cocktail stick, rounded off the end with a knife, and then dipped it in water so it wouldn't stick to the putty, before jabbing the ball lightly. This is also a useful little trick to make purity seals for 40k if you're into that kind of thing too. I made them just big enough to cover over the ribbon that I was going to add in the next step. I also used some leftover putty here on top of a magnet to make a little mound, which I painted brown and PVA glued on some of the leafier bits of the forest ground cover that I got from geekgaming.com. The idea for it was to be a pile of pipe weed or something, but it kind of turned out a little bit too large for that, but I think it still kind of works as alchemical components. Once both were dry, I gel super glued a magnet to the inside of one scroll, south side down, and rolled it up around it, gluing it in place. I made two more scrolls to go with it that I also rolled up, but without the magnets inside, because I was just going to glue these to the other scroll. You can also easily leave it as just being one scroll, but I wanted to make a little pile. To add some colour to the scrolls, I wrapped a 5 eighths of an inch long piece of 2mm wide satin burgundy ribbon that my other half kindly let me borrow around the middle. I cut a 45 degree angle into the end of it for a little bit more detail and gel super glued each end carefully to the scrolls. There's a link to this stuff in the description, but mainly just to show you the sort of stuff I used. You can pick this stuff up much cheaper elsewhere with a quick search. I then used some more gel superglue to attach those wax seals to the ribbons, before carefully painting them with GW Corn Red and highlighting them with a 50-50 mix of Corn Red and GW Mephiston Red. Finally, I used a small amount of glue to seal the three together, so I can easily throw them down onto a table. Job done. These came out really nicely and add some really nice rich colour to a room, whether you want to use them as spell scrolls or just government documents in a mayor's office or something like that. If you think these ideas are cool and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, don't forget to subscribe, like and hit the bell to make sure you see my videos in future. Making the large pile of papers was basically made by cutting a stack of folded paper until I had a bunch of 3 eighths of an inch by half an inch sheets. All I did was hole punch the middle, put some gel super glue in there and spread it around to seal the papers together and add a 3mm by 2mm N52 neomidium magnet with the south side facing down, the same way as I've done with all accessories since first showing the magnetic tables. You can also make a bit more of a scattered, messy version by putting a cocktail stick through the hole in the middle and spinning the papers around a bit, and then tapping the sides of that hole to line it up again before gluing in the magnet. From there, I mussed up the edges of the paper with my fingers, and once the superglue was set, soaked it in tea to stain it. When letting it dry, it's a good idea to muss the papers up again so the edges aren't completely lined up together. You can also scrumple up a bunch of these separately after tea staining them, and stick a magnet inside one of them before doing that. Glue them together at the end with the south side of the magnet facing down, and you've got a nice pile of academic frustration. Now you can either draw or paint a design on a top sheet to stick on at this point, or you can do what I did if you're one of the nice people who help buy me supplies by supporting the channel on Patreon. These printable pages are up for download for patrons. I cut one out and blue tacked it to the top. Only blue tacking it means that I can replace the top sheet and change what's in the piles really easily. 
I don't like doing this for attaching things to furniture and that kind of thing because blue tack can be a little bit temperamental and leave bits behind or make the area sticky, which is kind of less of a problem if the area will never actually be visible like with these pieces. Now you can crinkle these up by scrunching and unfolding them again, but doing that removes a lot of the delicate detail from the printout, so I wouldn't advise it. What you can do is bend them slightly each way to give them some waviness without damaging them. The smaller piles of sheets are even easier because they're just a few printed sheets or sheets that you've drawn stuck together with a thin layer of PVA. The only niggle is keeping them in place, which you can solve by putting a candle, bowl or tankard from one of my previous videos on them, but I decided to make some paperweights instead. Skull based paperweights to be specific, made from various kinds of skulls found in the Citadel Skulls box, most of which have convenient magnet sized holes in the bottom, because you know skulls. But the ones that didn't, I just drilled holes into the bottom of. The larger skulls can be done with 3mm magnets, but the human and bird skulls needed 2mm magnets because they're smaller. They still work, they're just a little bit less strong. To paint these, I decided to go with contrast paints with a bit of skeleton hoard over wraith bone. The only more complex bits were the horns and the demon skulls, which I did with a mix of skeleton hoard with some other contrast paints. For the horns, I used a 50-50 mix of Skeleton Horde and Basilicanum Grey. For the Bloodletter Skull, I used a little bit of Flesh Terror Red mixed in, and then some pure Black Templar for the horns in two coats. And for the Plague Bearer Skull, I used 50-50 Creed Camo and Skeleton Horde, with the horns done in the same way as the animal horns. I mainly chose Contrast for all of this because I was running low on time and I wanted to get the build finished for you guys. These skulls have a lot of detail and could be a lot of fun to paint properly if you actually have the time. I love these even as separate decorations, they really let you change the feel of a room, especially when you start using demon skulls. I even made one with a candle on top using the same technique as I used for all the other candles in the original table video. Though honestly, size wise, I do kind of wish I'd used the orc skull. These pieces I'm really happy with, both the thicker piles and the scattered sheets. They're quick, they're easy, and again, they let you change the design of what's on the paper to suit the room. I wanted to make some little wall-mounted herb garden slash window box pieces, because one, they look cool, and two, it seemed like the kind of thing a wizard would have in his sanctum to gather potion ingredients and that sort of thing. It's also stupidly easy to make, so there's that. I started with a 1 and 7 eighths of an inch long, 1 quarter inch column of XPS foam for the inside, which is also a neat trick to keep everything at right angles because the hot wire table is nice and accurate. I textured the top of this with some tin foil to make it a little bit less flat. For the front and back, I cut, wire brushed and tacky glued two strips of 5 sixteenths of an inch tall, 2 inch long balsa wood two pieces 5 sixteenths of an inch tall and quarter of an inch wide for the sides, and one piece 3 eighths of an inch wide and two inches long for the base. All of these were cut from 1 sixteenth of an inch thick balsa wood. I base coated the top of the foam in Mod Podge and dark brown and stained the wood with Army Paint a Strong Tone Wash. Then I used some forest path basing from geekgaming.com to get that realistic dirt texture and used some PVA glue to attach it to the top before adding some flower and bush tufts on top. These take a little bit of tucking in because they are ever so slightly bigger than the flower boxes I've created, but when they are tucked in, they look like they are sprouting out of it and barely contained by it, so it kind of works quite well. If you're just using tufts and you're not gonna have any of the dirt visible, you can forego the forest path basing section um, because it mostly won't be visible but I left a few pieces deliberately open because I really like this dirt effect and I thought it looked really cool. Finally, I carefully used some liquid super glue to attach two half inch cocktail sticks with the ends cut at a 45 degree angle to the very bottom of the back, one inches apart from each other in the center. I say carefully because liquid super glue is a bit temperamental and you don't want to get this stuff on your fingers if you can possibly help it. You can use gel superglue for this, I just find liquid superglue is a little bit stronger. 
Putting these at the bottom should mean that they can slot in flush on top of the planks on archive wood walls. It also lines up with slots you can make in the bottom of archive stone window pieces to make flower window boxes. This is a nice little detail you can add and it helps to show that a village is alive and thriving. Unless you want the village to be dead and rotten. In which case, maybe hold off on the window boxes. Making the large open book was easier than it looks, but it's still not the most simple of builds. I started by making the pages. Now for a book this thick, they usually aren't made with one large wad of folded paper, and I think that's where a lot of the mini book crafting that I've seen online seems to go a little bit wonky. I cut out five smaller, half an inch tall, three eighth of an inch wide page wads from four sheet thick paper folded over. So eight three eighth of an inch wide sheets in total per wad. I then tea stained these for one minute. Now I did something I regretted here and dunked them all at once, which made it hard to make sure that they were all dunked for a similar amount of time. And at the end, I ended up just grabbing handfuls of them. If I was gonna do this again, I'd dunk one wad at a time. Once dunked, I laid each page out separately to dry while I worked on the book cover. To make said cover, I took a strip of cereal card 5 eighths of an inch tall by one and one eighth of an inch wide. I primed it with black spray to give it a strong base coat to work from and painted the inside in GW Dryad Bark with a layer of matte varnish over that to protect it and measured into the center and drew a line down the middle of that too. After a while, the pages finally dried and I put them back into their wads and added a tiny thin bit of tacky glue to the center of each sheet to seal each wad together. If I made these books in future, I think I would do this before staining to make it a bit easier. I wasn't sure if it would mess with the staining, but honestly, with the tiny amount of glue that I ended up using, probably not. Once I waited for them to dry again, I gel super glued them each in turn to the middle of the book standing upright and waited until they were totally dry. Once they were, I spread the pages outwards until they lay nice and flat, but with those layered edges like a real book. You don't need to glue them down, but you can if you want to. To add some corner details, I used some 1 8 of an inch wide strips of aluminium foil cut from a takeaway container. I cut the corners off diagonally and cut two triangles in the middle so I could bend and fit them on each corner of the cover. Once you're sure they fit, super gluing them in place is a good idea, otherwise they just, you know, fall off. On top of these pages, I cut out one of the printed pages from my Patreon sheet, folded it sharply down the centre and blue tacked it on so the centre was pushed down as far as I could get it. This basically means this is a book of whatever I happened to want it to be at the time. I also carefully drilled a magnet hole in the back for another 3mm magnet, so I can stick it to pretty much whatever I like. Then I just painted the outside cover in more GW Dryad Bark, which I also used to base coat the corners before painting them in Vallejo model color gold. So the book rest is another thing that looks complicated, but really isn't. The most complicated part is figuring out the measurements, which I've already done. To make it, I needed to cut pieces of 1 16th of an inch thick balsa wood in the measurements that I've listed on screen now, all but one of which were cut from a three inch strip which I wire brushed first along the grain to make it deeper and more detailed. I started by making the undershelf using a one and one eighth of an inch by seven sixteenths of an inch piece as the base. These measurements are so specific to allow the side pieces to slot on nicely. I drilled a three millimeter magnet hole in the middle and gel super glued one in, south side facing down. I used two half an inch by quarter inch pieces as the sides and a one and an eighth of an inch by quarter inch piece at the back, which I tacky glued on. I also added the three sixteenth of an inch by seven sixteenth of an inch piece to the middle, separating the shelves. Now the magnet will be sticking out a little bit, but balsa wood has this wonderful feature in that it's soft as hell. So you can just push it down into place over the magnet and it'll mold itself around it. To allow me to add accessories in here, I cut a half an inch by quarter inch strip of tin cut from a tin can lid and gel super glued them into place on each shelf section. You will want to use safety measures when handling tin like thick gloves. Much like a small goblin like creature with a knife, it can and will cut you if you're not careful. On top of this, I grabbed the one and three quarter inch strip, cut the corners an eighth of an inch from the edge at a 45 degree angle and tacky glued it on top. 
Then to allow me to attach accessories to the sides here, I also cut a small square of tin for each side and super glued them on. Now the base was done, I cut the half an inch by 11 16 of an inch piece diagonally to use as the side pieces and tacky glued them to the base alongside the 1 and 1 8 of an inch by 11 16 of an inch piece as the back. Which I then trimmed carefully with an X-Acto knife to match the angle of the side pieces. And for the top I used the 1 32nd of an inch piece, the thinner piece basically. I super glued a piece of tin to the middle of it first and tacky glued it in place and then trimmed the top and bottom ever so slightly to fit. Finally I added the 16th of an inch by one and a quarter inch piece to the bottom for the book to rest on. For painting I doused the whole thing in Army Painter Strong Tone Wash. This makes it a nice dark wood that mostly matches my other furniture but also manages to stand out a little bit. Any bits that didn't stain properly the first time around, usually areas that get glue on them during building, I give a second coat or a third coat if they need it. And then painted the tin areas in Vallejo Gold over a GW Rhinox Hide base coat to add some complementary spot colour. Now this piece combined with a large book I am really happy with. It's a great centerpiece but it can also make a cool display mount to place at the side of a room and with all the accessories and book pages you can completely change the mood of the piece in seconds. You can even use magnets like these to hold a map or other page in place on the piece to use it as a kind of display mount. I think these all came out pretty well and I've got some plans for a future video to do things like alchemy equipment and that kind of thing but really I wanted to get the books and scrolls and all that kind of stuff done for this video for a kind of study library archive kind of look. Which also means these accessories work perfectly for any non-wizardy library or archive. Don't look at me like that. Wizardy! It's a word. Or it is now. As always thank you to everybody for subscribing and watching these videos but especially thank you to you guys who make it possible for me to make these videos by supporting me on Patreon. Your incredibly generous support is massively appreciated and makes this dream of mine of running a channel like this well, feasible. If you want to support more videos like this being made, on Patreon you do get access as a thank you to these videos up to a week early, as well as access to some printables which help add some easy extra details to your crafting. The list of those is getting bigger over time too. That aside, let me know what you like about these accessories or any of your own ideas in the comments. I love hearing from you guys and sometimes you give me that little spark of inspiration to make something in the future. And seriously, thank you to anybody who's taken a second to share these videos with people in groups. I've seen a few people do this on Facebook recently and it really means a lot for you guys to help me out like that. Finally, if you need any tools or supplies for your builds, you can find a link to my equipment list in the description below, where I've got links to everything I use and where to find it. And if you buy anything on there from Amazon, it won't cost you a penny extra, but Amazon will send me a little bit of what you buy to help fund the channel, which is a nice little extra. Thank you guys for watching. I'll be back next week with more terrain and ideas. Until then, I'll be in the archive.